So today we're going to go through a phishing attempt. I believe this belongs to the Emotet phishing campaign. Before I do, uh, if y'all have any questions on this analysis or would like to follow along, there is a link in the description to a report on ringzerolabs.com and you can download the sample and follow along with us. Well, we start out um, this campaign, it actually has a very large infection chain. So I've created a little roadmap over here on the right hand side. And this may be useful to follow along since there are so many files and it does uh, take a bit to get through all of them. But we're going to kind of run through them uh, fairly quickly so this roadmap should help a little bit. Well, we start out, here's all the files. Uh, this is what everything comes down to. But we start out by looking at the initial PDF that's here. And what it looks like is this. So uh, you'll get this PDF in, the, in an email. And I'll say that uh, it's secured. You know, it kind of obscures the view of the document. And uh, please click here to uh, view the complete file. And obvious phishing campaign, but if we take a look at the file in PDF Stream Dumper, and search for URLs. We're able to find numerous FTP servers complete with credentials that are trying to download various files. So since we have the credentials, um, what we can do is fire up a VPN and go ahead and take a look at that server and see if there's anything else hosted on it, uh, which I've already done. So I'm not gonna log into it again. But this was basically it. Um, a couple zips, fairly recent dates on them, and then a couple subdirectories here. And basically they would, um, you know, clicking the link would come and download the files and put them on the machine and then the user would have to open up the zip files and execute what's inside. And what's inside are these two files here. So once that link is clicked, you get the zip file, you can extract it, and inside there's an executable that's disguised as a PDF. It has the PDF logo, as well as the file name of the file that you were trying to open. And what happens when you execute this executable is all of these files down through here are extracted to the machine and it looks like this these are all the files that come out and essentially what the executable will do is launch the first set of scripts that it drops out so the first set of scripts are all of these uh, and step five here and they look like this so initially we're going to start out with launch.vbs and what this does is launches basically all this does is just launch the next batch file and that's hbv02 so if we take a look at hbv02 you can see that uh, a bit more text and this batch file is going to start this jpeg and the jpeg is Essentially, it's, it's nothing. It's a zero kilobyte file that has nothing in it. So this would pop up and the user would see it, and it's mainly just a distraction. And then further down the line here, they're copying some stuff out, changing the attributes of the different files here, or folders. And then down at the bottom, they're going to go ahead and start the next VBS script, which is this adob9.vbs, that's here. adob9.vbs simply starts the next batch file, which is hbv03. So a little bit of a chain here, launch.vbs, hbv02, adob9, and then finally we get to the last batch file, which is hbv03. And this one kind of spread out, hard to read. It's not obfuscated, it's just there's a lot of new lines in it. So we're going to go ahead and go into replace and put two 
dash r dash n's uh, together and replace it with a single dash r dash n and that's just a, a new line feed carriage return. We're going to replace all of them and keep placing, placing, placing until there are no more and that kind of <coughs> hunkers everything down a little bit better. So up here at the top you can see that it's launching another one of the executables that are dropped out. That executable is here at step six and essentially all that is is an FTP client. Um, not sure if there's something different about it but it is an FTP client of some sort and it's instructing it to um, that it's going to be connecting to this FTP server here with potential uh, I think those those might be credentials I can't remember Anyways, the configuration uh, settings that is given to this FTP client to connect to this uh, FTP server. And then right here, we are adding persistence. So the machine on boot up is going to take that uh, batch file there and run it every time the machine is started. And then that will kick off that script chain again and launch all of these executables. Coming down through, it's deleting some, some files, deleting anything that uh, may have been there on the previous run. And then it's getting the IP information here and outputting it to a file. It's there, the adip2.klc. And we can inspect that file. It's nothing fancy. Here we just see that, you know, has output of IP configuration information. Following down through, we see this launching two of the other executables. I believe these are the actual password stealers, and this tech app option is going to output whatever they steal to these uh, to these files. And then this is just concatenating together information here. We see that uh, they're disabling some firewall rules. And then here they're setting some parameters for how they're going to name the files. And then down at the bottom, we have the actual connections to the uh, FTP servers. And how they get to those are they read in a sequence uh, set of FTP commands. And those can be seen in these two files here, Sun AFR and 870.afr. What both of those are is there's the username and password and then they start the sequence of exfiltrating the data. And it's the same for the other file. So since they so graciously provided us with FTP credentials to their server, um, fire up a VPN, go ahead and log in, poke around, see what was there. And what was there was a massive amount of user information. Um, each one of these records contains usernames, passwords for you name it, Facebook, email, banking, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, so these are going to be reported to, not sure who, uh, IC3 or FBI or threat security, somebody. Um, see if we can get this server taken down and uh, potentially start victim notification for all of their, uh, their accounts. Um, but yeah. So this analysis, was, this analysis was mainly focused on this infection chain over here. And we didn't really go into the password stealers themselves, the executables. They're pretty heavily detected by antivirus, so not much need to reverse those. But this infection chain was interesting, and especially since it led to such a massive um, victim credential server essentially so all the actual traded data is just out there if you have these credentials um, but I hope this helps uh, and hope this uh, was informative on how to analyze PDFs and phishing campaigns in general these same techniques can be applied to office documents and zips and whatever else you receive in the in your email normally it's just an initial infection vector to get all of these files over here on the right 
and those files will be the actual payloads that do something to the system. But if you all have any questions or any comments or concerns, suggestions for the video, or questions on malware analysis or some other malware that you've seen, go ahead and hit us up at ringzerolabs.com and we'll be happy to answer any questions.